Hey guys, Jim here bringing you another voice tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at configuring a uh, column manager, installing from scratch via the uh, OVA templates that are that come pre-installed on BE6Ks, BE6K smalls, and the like. So I already have uh, a vSphere up and running here, and I currently already have some pre-configured but we're going to ignore those and I'm actually going to uh, shut down the call manager on here uh, so that it's not wasting resources while we're trying to do other things. So that's going to be shutting down here and we're going to be deploying an OVA template that's already in the data store. Um, and just so we can see that, we're going to go over to the server, configuration, and uh, storage. And in the data store, we're just going to double click on that and browse the, the data store. And you can see over here, there's an OVA, o ISO, excuse me, a folder. And within that, we have CUCM and CUC and we're on version 10 and this shows you the templates that's already in here and these come from Cisco uh, when you purchase. We're going to be using the obviously the CUCM since we're going to be installing call manager or ver version 10.5 so we're going to be using this OVA. Now to deploy this I'm going to show you a, a little secret or not a secret, but a little trick um, that can help when we go over here to deploy OVA. And it's going to, instead of having to download this thing to your PC, then re-upload it, uh, we're actually going to bring up, we're going to browse to your, uh, to your vSphere, IP address, enter the root username and password, and then we're going to browse and we'll just say we came in. This is the IP address in my environment of vSphere, and then we're going to go to the uh, data store, and we're going to go to the same place, the OVA ISO CUCM version 10, to where the list of our OVAs are. We're going to grab this URL, copy that. And paste it into our deploy from. So it's a file or a URL. So the only thing we need to do is after this v10 right here, we need to actually type in the actual file. Uh, and in this case, let me just go back up. It's going to be this guy right here. So right after this version 10, we add a little dash, type in the file, and we hit next. Now it popped up on a different screen here to log in, so we'll just do that. And there we go. It has found our OVA. Now we can rename it, whatever we choose here. And we're going to be doing the B6K. And we can go through. And just like that, deploy our OVA template. So that's pretty quick. Uh, and a little tip there, instead of have downloading it and re-uploading it, you just go and browse the data store and find the location. So now this guy is ready. Um, all the settings before we power this thing on are pretty much ready to go in the OVA that comes. The only thing that we need to do is point our um, CD, DVD drive, to the correct um, ISO file. So we're going to connect on power on and we're going to pull from the data store and we're going to pull from the same place 
version 10, except it's going to be this bootable file that also came from Cisco. So we'll click that. And now we will power this guy up. And open up the console. And now I'll go through its little preloading phase here and start up the GUI and we'll get roll, rocking and rolling on configuring Call Manager. So uh, it's a good idea to test the media. In this case, to save time, I'm going to skip it. Don't tell anyone. So now it's uh, opening up the media from the data store that we pointed to on the CD DVD drive. And this could take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause while it does its thing. All right, so it has come up with uh, what we need to do. This is the product we're wanting to install, so we'll hit OK. And that is the correct version, so we'll hit yes. Now we are going to proceed with the um, configuration here. And we are, in this case, do not want to do any patches. So we'll hit no. And basic installation. And we can go down through and select our time zone. Don't need to change any NICs, don't need to change any MTU. Uh, we do not want to use DHCP in this case, so we're going to be inputting our own information. I have a typo up there, let me go back. And in this case, we're not going to be doing DNS. I know that can be an arguable point. Uh, in my eyes, it's just another troubleshooting step, uh, point of failure. So we're not going to do DNS. And go right into the admin. Now, this is the operating system administration uh, username and password. So we will be doing that. right here. I think I fat fingered something. I can do it again. There we go. Certificate. And now we're at the, this is the first node. It will be the publisher node. So we'll yes. And we'll enter in our NTP. Security configuration password. That is for communication in a cluster and with uh, Unity and a whole bunch of things behind the scenes. Uh, we don't need to do SMTP at this point. And I'm going to do remind me later here for the call home feature. Now this is the actual GUI admin username and password, so we'll enter that in. And that is complete. And all that can be done with an answer file. Um, I will probably, just for the fun of it, do another video to show you how to run through and do a installation like this with the answer file so you don't even have to sit here and type in that. 
and just do it once for each device on Cisco's uh, generation file website. I will put it on a floppy d or USB drive and go from there. So this is going to take about an hour. So we're going to go and do something else and I'll see you when this thing finishes. So there we are, we're back now and uh, the call manager 1052 has finished installing. Um, that took about an hour or so, um, but the actual work time you saw was just me entering in information into the installation uh, GUI there. So it's rather quick when you have these files already in the data store and they come like this when you purchase that way from Cisco on a BE6K or a BE6K small. So there you have it. Uh, we can now log in with the uh, OS admin credentials that we gave to it. Hey, this is Jim here again, bringing you another voice tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be doing a install with a answer file. Um, what that means is I went over here to Cisco's answer file generator. I put in the information I needed, all the uh, credentials, host names, IPs, cluster information, certificate file information that produces the license back, all that. Uh, and it spits out uh, into two files, cluster and the primary and the platform configuration uh, and then what I did is I stuck those files using um, in this case I think I use magic ISO and I stuck those files and saved them as a floppy disk. I know it sounds old school but the actual OVAs in the virtual template don't support USB drivers I believe that's still correct um, so we're gonna use this as a floppy so then we move back over to our VMware and you can see I've created a new um, well, I guess you can't see but I have created a new Unity connection by deploying the OVA template now we're going to go in and edit the settings we're going to go ahead and set up our data store to point to the correct Um, ISO image for the install and we'll make sure to connect on power on we're gonna go ahead and power this guy on and we have to since it's a BE6K I have to make a small adjustment to the uh, settings that's not pertinent to this video so I'll be right back all right, there we go. Magic of video. Now that our VM is starting up, and we'll open up the console. And while that guy is booting up, we're going to go and, and attach our floppy disk, which I have already uploaded that file I showed you into this answer file generator, and we'll connect that. and it's detecting media and it should go through collect all the information within the answer file and start actually formatting um, formatting the and starting the installation process I believe there may be one screen yet the version I think we have to say yes here to proceed and it should take it on from there and there it goes So starting the formatting process, I'll skip this and be right back with you. So we are back here. This thing should be almost finished with the formatting process and then we'll see it start uh, getting into the installation process with no other uh, screens. It didn't pop up with the installation GUI for us to do all the typing. We did that ahead of the game. Another benefit to that is you can actually find your license Mac. 
um, within that for licensing information uh, in your platform configuration when you generate that. But um, that's an easy way, especially if you have a large cluster or multiple locations or multiple clients. Having these uh, generation or answer or generate an answer file, uh, tongue tied. Um, you can have those ready in advance. Pop those on when you start a VM, and you can have you know a lot of these run at once with minimal work on your part. So um, when this thing gets running here, we'll prove that it's starting the install process uh, simply with that floppy image with the platform and cluster configuration files. So as soon as it starts, and you can see that there was no other screens, we'll go ahead and move on to something else. And um, we're actually going to be installing Hyam and Presence, and then getting into auto provisioning, or prime provisioning, <laughs> in our next uh, video series for getting started with our cluster and um, auto provisioning our users. So this should be about done. So it's a very, oh, there it goes. Checking its dependencies and it's starting the, ins the installation. So there we have it. Uh, we're able to do minimal work on the actual GUI itself. Just need to kick start it, kick start it, and the answer file will take it from there. So I'd like to thank you for viewing. Uh, please remember to comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks.